Hey guys, what's going on? So Raspberry Pi is a wonderful thing. Their compute module is pretty sweet as well. And Big Tree Tech has got the Raspberry Pad 5, which uses the compute module. And in today's video, we're going to go through the process of getting the CM4, the compute module 4, installed on the Pad 5. We're going to get the operating system loaded on it, and we are going to get Clipper installed along with Clipper Screen. Uh, again, the Pad 5 and the CM4 were provided to me by Big Tree Tech and BQ, so thank you for that, guys. And that's that's pretty much it. We're just going to get right into this thing. Uh, I will let you know that I do have a Raspberry Pad 5. Uh, that was sent to me again, as well as the CM4, the version that they sent to me, I'm going to double check here, is again the 2 gig model, 2 gigs of RAM with 8 gigs of storage and Wi-Fi. So that's what was sent to me. Let me take a minute here and I'll, I'll show you guys what, uh, what we got going on. So this is what they sent to me here. If you go to the bq-equipment slash collections and there's a big long URL here but if you go to their website and you go through the screens and LCDs you will find it here again the variation that they sent me was the CM4102008 CM4 PCB slash ET or EXT it says 2 gigs uh, 2 gigs 8 gigs that's again 2 gigs of RAM 8 gigs of uh, storage with Wi-Fi this is important to know now because as long as you have one with an EMMC on it, uh, which is that 8 gigs of storage, uh, we are going to have a different process we need to go through during the install. If you have the light variant, uh, it's the same as pretty much anything else. Copy it to an SD card and boot. But with the EMMC, there are a few more steps. And we'll cover that here as we get started. Let's go ahead and jump over to the Big Tree Tech GitHub page. Uh, if you go over to Big, if you go to GitHub.com slash Big Tree Tech, which let's start at the beginning, shall we? You'll come here, click on repositories at the top, and then scroll on down until you find the Raspberry Pad or the Raspberry Dash Pad. Click on that, and then there's our Pad Five click here and we want to get the manual out of there so this is the important part for us in here as well as if you click on 3d you can find the stl files for the case that i did print and when we get into that here in a few i will show you guys the case but uh let's jump over to the raspberry pad 5 and the cm4 and show you guys what we're working with all right guys here's the raspberry pad 5 and the cm4 flip this guy over real quick just give you a little peek at the screen it's a little dirty you can see a lot of reflections sorry about that but that's okay here is our raspberry pad 5 here's our cm4 what you want to do when you install the cm4 is you want to make sure you line it up right you can see that the snap connectors here are located a little closer to the top side the way i have it orientated so you want to do the same thing, make sure that the orientation is correct, that you have these closer to this top set of screw holes. And then when we set this thing on, we want to line it up with those screw holes. Um, make sure it, you'll feel it kind of drop into place there. Once it does, a little bit of force, you'll hear it snap in. And uh, once it's snapped into place there, should be okay and now we got to put the screws in for that part i'm gonna do that off camera but it's it's very simple you just uh put a one of the four screws in each one of the holes there and it'll be good to go so give me just a minute while i do that and i'll also show you guys the fancy little case that they have available to print off of the github as well so when i come right back which will be a second for you but a few minutes for me you'll see it all dressed up nice and fancy so let's go ahead and pause and we'll be right back all right, guys, had a momentary lapse there. Can't put it in the case yet because there is some things we need to prep on here and then we'll have to change those. So we'll put it in the case at the very end, but I did want to take a minute and show you guys that the board is installed and then get ready for the next step, which will be in the instructions. So let's jump back over to the instructions and we'll get this thing prepped and ready for install. All right, guys, um, let's jump over to the right screen. There we go. All right, this is that uh, PDF for the instructions. Uh, we moved down to, let's jump back up a little bit here. We're on page 10. This is the system installation. Um, 
what we need to do is first go and download the image that we need and it tells you the link right here to go to raspberrypi.com slash software slash operating system. You click that, comes to this page here, and according to the instructions, it does say here a few other things that there is a fluid and a mainsail image that you can download. For the sake of this, I'm just going to install the Raspberry Pi desktop and we'll install it manually afterwards. The reason for that being is, is I just find this a little bit easier and thanks to another uh, GitHub repository, which I'll show you here a little bit later, it makes things a lot easier to install it. Uh, also just make sure that you get the latest, greatest, and most up-to-date stuff. But uh, in here they do tell you that this is compatible with all Raspberry Pi models. And the version that we're going to pick is the Raspberry Pi OS with desktop. I just like having the desktop environment installed uh, when we get going. So that'll be the one that we grab and install. So we'll go back to the web page here and we'll scroll down. Again, Raspberry Pi OS with desktop. You can see this one was updated as of September 22nd. So we go ahead and click download. Let's save this right out to the desktop so it's easy to find. And uh, this should only take uh, about a minute. So we'll be right back as soon as it's done downloading. All right, guys, now that that part's done downloading, we're going to scroll down to page, I believe it was 14. Yes, page 14 in the instructions. And that is installing on the eMMC version. It says OS on SD card will not run with eMMC version. So this is why we're doing this. This has an eMMC of 8 gigs of storage, like I said before. And this is the process we're going to go through. So first we need to install the RPI boot. Uh, for Windows download and install, it's right here. So we just click this link. It'll take us over. Again, we'll just throw it right on the desktop there. And then we'll come back to the instructions. And then it says for Mac or Linux, if you are using those, here is the link for those. Now, before I run the install on that, which I've already done this once before, and uh, I already have the RPI boot installed, but uh, you'll run it once to do the install. So let's minimize that and we'll get that started here. We click on the open and it's gonna go ahead and do its thing. It'll pop up on the screen, hopefully in front of you guys, but if not, I'll bring it over in front of me. This does take a minute to do. So while it does kind of run through its steps and it does hopefully show up for you, if not, like I said, I've already installed this once, so it may not actually pop up on the screen, but, um, if anything does pop up on the screen, just follow the steps, get through the install process. And once that's done, then you go on to the, the next step, which will be coming down here and we'll set the switch one OTG or USB OTG and switch two to boot. Uh, those are located on the board. So let's jump back over there and I'll show you that. All right, guys, located on the back of the screen, there's a small little spot right here, uh, located just off the corner, come across from the CM4. You will see this little spot. Yours will have orange tape on it when you first do this, uh, but you'll take that piece of orange tape off. And then the two pins that we need to set are right here. It actually is even stamped right on the board. It says boot and USB OTG. That's these bottom two sets of switches. We need to turn both of those on. So we want to take a little tool here, flip them both to the on position. There we go. Let's make sure that actually went. Ah, oh, a little tricky to get to guys. Sorry. There we go. We got both of those flipped to the on position now. So we want to make sure that, uh, again, we've done that. And the little switch down here, we want to make sure this is switched over to USB. So again, make sure that is switched to USB as well. Uh, it's got USB and CAN bus and USB is going to be switched that direction. So you're going to want to switch it towards the CM4 is for USB. So flip that switch over as well and you'll be good to go for the next step. Let's jump back to the directions. Okay, guys. So since I've already installed the RPI boot, it did not show up on my screen, so I do apologize. But please know that when you run that, it should pop up on your screen. You should have some steps to follow through for a software install. It goes very quickly, doesn't take very long. And when it's all said and done, you will have the RPI boot. Uh, as it does say down here, connect to a USB, uh, connect the USB-C port 
to your computer's USB port to prevent insufficient power um, uh, from the computer USB port connect causing errors, it says plug into a, your cable into a USB hub with independent power or power the CM4 externally from 5 volts. And again, a little farther up in the directions, it shows you where the pins are uh, if you wanted to connect a 5 volt directly to the, the screen. I'm going to go ahead and run this directly off a USB port, as it says to. It says either use a USB port or if you get insufficient power to run it from a powered uh, hub. I will run mine directly off the USB port and everything should work just fine for me. We're going to cross our fingers. <laughs> but uh, it does say now that uh, we need to run the RPi EXE, which I've already pinned it down here, but you can go ahead and uh, just do a quick search for it. You will find it. But here it is. It says it's currently waiting. So we're going to grab our USB cable. Give me just a moment. I'm going to change something here, then I'll jump over and show you guys the connecting of it. It's not uh, a super crazy difficult thing to do, but here we go. Ooh, that is blurry. Let's fix that for you guys. There you go. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this USB-C in. Once we plug that in, let's jump back over here. And we can see that it is currently connecting. It's doing its thing. And we have successful four bytes read. Loading. It's going through. And now it's done its thing and it has connected. Now what we want to do is after you have successful or you successfully installed the OS, you need to switch those off. And the funny part is in the directions here, that's where it kind of cuts there. Uh, it does talk about some other stuff, but it doesn't come back and tell you that you need to go through basically the above steps here. So what we're going to do is kind of back up now, and it should say, once you've done these steps, please go back and follow through using the proper way which that's the main reason why I'm making this video is to show you guys what needs to be done after you've done that. So once we've connected the RPi boot, we'll need to come in here and we'll need to choose the OS, which we downloaded earlier. And it tells us that we need to come down to choose custom. In this case, it should be right out on the desktop there. Um, let's find it real quick. <laughs> um where did i put it i thought i put it on the desktop give me just a minute guys while i find that we'll come right back silly me it was right here the whole time so we'll select the 2022 0922 it'll be different for you if you're watching this in the future but uh, we'll grab our raspberry pi os bullseye image which is right there we'll click open then we're going to choose a device and we see this rpi MSD-001 in my case, and that's what it says. It does show the 7.8 gigs, or in this case, it was an 8 gig module, so we'll select that. Here's where we're going to go through the process of making sure we have a host name installed. We're going to go ahead and just use the Raspberry Pi.local, and we're going to leave the or enable SSH so that this way we can get into it. Um, I do use the password authentication. And we got Pi in there as the name. And then, of course, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y, or Raspberry. If you want to set up your Wi-Fi, now is the time to do that. You just hit Configure Wi-Fi. You'll type in your SSID and your password for your uh, network. In my case, I'm going to be doing this wired in through Ethernet. So I am not going to do this step. But if you want to do this step, if you're going to connect wirelessly, this is how you're going to want to do it. You're going to want to check that box. Put in your Wi-Fi name, put in your Wi-Fi password, and uh, then go ahead and move on down the line. The only other thing is, you don't have to set this, but I like to, so I set it here, my local settings. I am in the central time zone, which they list as Chicago, so we just do that. USB keyboard for me, and then I leave these bottom two checked. It doesn't hurt anything, and then if you want to have it play a cute little sound for you, you can do that, uh, but I leave that part unchecked and hit save. And now that we have all those settings done, now we go ahead and hit write. So we click write. It's going to tell us that all the data on there is going to be erased. Do we wish to continue? I'm going to say yes, because I know that's the Raspberry Pi CM4 that I'm working with. That is the device that I want to flash this to. And just to give you guys a quick look, while it's writing, let me jump over to the dock cam here, show you guys. I'm going to move you down while we're recording. I'm sorry if it annoys anybody's eyeballs. 
But uh, as you can see there, all three of the LED lights are currently lit up. I know it's kind of hard to see with the bright white light up above, but all three of those little LEDs located right here are all currently lit up while it is going through the process of writing that over to the CM4. It's going to get that part done, and when it is, we'll come back. The writing process, just so you guys know, the writing process does take a little while. Um, like, grab your coffee kind of long while. So if you're out of coffee, go get more. Come back, and it'll still be doing something. Promise you that. Uh, writing process takes about five minutes, and then it verifies, which takes about another five minutes. So you got about ten minutes in most cases, to kick back, relax, enjoy some coffee, get caught up on some emails, uh, maybe make sure the family isn't burning the house down. <laughs> it's a joke, guys. It's a joke. Uh, but go ahead, kill some time. I'm going to go ahead and pause this here because I don't think you guys want to see any more of this. You guys want to get into the good stuff. So I'm going to pause this here, be a second for you guys, be several minutes for me, and then we'll come back and we'll pick up with the next part of the directions. So guys, I'll see you here in just a few. This does take a bit longer. I forget that writing to the CM4 does take a little bit longer, but once it's done, it does go ahead and verify. And this process does take a little while as well. So just sit back, relax, get some more coffee. You're probably gone through a cup of coffee by now. So uh, go get yourself another cup of coffee while you're waiting, and as soon as this is done, we'll jump back into it. Okay, guys, it's done. We'll go ahead and click on good old continue here. We can, can close this now at this point. <laughs> Sorry about that. And we need to uh, jump over to the board now, uh, change a couple settings, and then we can get into this thing through SSH, through PuTTY. That's the utility I'm going to use. And we can follow along with the rest of the steps here to enable the USB hub and make sure that it's outputting to the proper display. And then if we do have the camera stuff, that would be handled right in here as well. I do not have a camera to connect to it, so we will not be connecting a camera, but we will go through the steps for the USB hub and the DS1 or the DSi1 display setup. So let's go ahead and jump over there real quick. Let's go ahead and uh, get ready to move on to the next steps. All right, guys, the first thing we need to do is pull the power. So we'll go ahead and disconnect power. And we need to put our dip switches back. So let's grab these real quick with our little pointy pliers here or a small pick or something you could use. Flip those back over. And then what we need to do is flip this guy over. I've got the pretty purple network cable connected. And we need to plug in power to it. And at this point, let's take a second. Let me get it propped up in that nice new case that I printed for it. That, uh, again, those files are on the GitHub. Let's get it in the case first just to make sure that it's protected. So one minute. All right, guys. There it is back in its fancy little case. Uh, don't mind the little bits of... Uh, bed weld that are on there. There are four screws that would hold in the corners there as well as a couple of screws to keep the top and bottom secured. I don't have those in yet. It is a nice tight friction fit so we're just going to run like this for the moment and uh, yeah spin this guy around so we can plug in the USB power here and then let's get the uh, network plugged back in on the side there. It goes in over on this side get our network plugged in. We're not going to see anything on this display because we have to go through the process. So let's jump back over to PuTTY, log into this thing, and uh, let's get those few commands put in so that the display will come up and then we'll be able to see on here. So let's jump over there. Hey guys, go ahead and load up PuTTY here. So let's go ahead and jump over to the screen for you. Uh, I do apologize that it's probably hard to see, uh, but we're going to hopefully... Uh, hopefully that'll figure itself out here momentarily. I did change the appearance size, so hopefully it'll look better for you here in just a second. We're going to go to Raspberry Pi dot local. Whoops, local. And just so you guys know, this does take a few seconds or a few minutes for it to go through the whole power on and configure process. So once you power it on, give it just a few for it to go through the process of setup. And then probably after about two or three minutes, it should be up and ready for you to connect. We go to Raspberry Pi local. You're going to get the little warning here saying that uh, you know potentially or potential secure breach or security breach. I'm just click yes, and then we're going to log in with Pi and Raspberry, the password that we set up at the beginning, 
And now we're logged into the device. And one of the first things that we want to do, and this is the first thing that I do, I know there's instructions there, but I'll do an SUDO space apt space update. I want to make sure everything is up to date. So we do an apt update first. Now this part run doesn't take very long. Now we're going to do apt upgrade and I do tack Y, which just says yes, do the installs when it asks. So we do tack Y and hit enter. This process, depending, may take a little while. So I'm going to pause this here and I'll come back as soon as it's done. But we let it run and do all of its updates that it needs to do. And then we should be good to go. All right, guys, that part's done. Let's get on to the next part here. We need to make sure that uh, we are following along with the instructions. Again, we're going to enable the USB hub, so we need to copy this portion right here. And it tells us that it needs to go into the config.txt file, so we need to find and then get in and edit the config.txt file, which, if I remember correctly, we do an ls here. There is no config file, so we're going to do a cd space double dot and hit enter. That brings us back to home. Let's check. We have pi in there, so we'll do cd space double dot again. And now we'll do an ls, and we should see in here a boot folder. So now if we go into cd space boot and hit enter, we hit tab there to do a make sure it kind of auto completes. And we do an ls in here. We should see right there the config.txt. So you know, SUDO space NANO, nano. I like nano, so that's what I stick with. Then we're going to type CO, and if we hit tab, it'll auto complete. Now, what we want to do is we want to add that part in. And what I do is I just scroll on down here to the bottom under all. And if we just right click, it will paste that in. One thing I have learned is let's make sure that that is proper in there. So we'll move this over and we have the DT overlay equals DWC2 comma space DR underscore mode equals host. That formatting did go in properly. So now what we want to do is exit. So we hit control X to exit, Y to save and enter to save that. So now we have the, uh, portion for the USB hub in. And then it also says, <laughs> uh, Acrobat Reader is giving me a little error there, but that's okay. And then it also says that by default that this is not, so we need to do a sudo wget, and we need to make sure this web address and everything goes in properly. So let's go ahead and copy this. I know that uh, from previous, this does not paste in properly. So let's go ahead and jump back to here we're gonna right click and if you notice all of our stuff is missing when it comes to and i'm going to scroll this down a little so i can read it from underneath uh, but all of our uh, dashes are missing so we need to go back into this move ourselves back and let's put all of the dashing back in space dash whoop delete that space out of there and then we need to come back here and take out all of our spaces and put in dashes uh, where they are needed oops so we want to make sure that that is all correct with the dashes in the right places so between the dt we have space or dash blob dash display one dash camera one dot bin and then we're going to do a da space dash o or dash zero i think it's o actually so dash o and then space and then we do slash boot slash dt uh hyphen i've been saying slash i apologize it's hyphens guys but hyphen uh blob dot bin and then we hit enter and then this is going to run through a process here uh only took a second there everything is already installed so now the screen should be working uh, once we do a reboot uh, which we come down here and it does tell us that if for some reason we don't want to use the screen and we want to use HDMI output that we just need to go in and delete this bin folder here um, 
And then again, for the camera, if you're using the camera, uh, there's the data sheet and licensing for it and the CM4 and uh, it says rename. It says download the uh, boot folder and uh, to the CM4 and rename the T, uh, BT dash blob to bit or to, to the, the bin file, sorry. And it says to follow the directions here. Again, I'm not going to do that part because I don't have a camera, so we won't be covering that. And as for the real-time clock, if you want to set that up, you need to get a CR1220 battery cell, put that in the battery slot on the back, and then you would just follow these directions here, um, these couple of directions here to enable the real-time clock. I am not going to worry about the real-time clock right now, so we're going to go ahead and move past that. So... Uh, since I'm not going to be playing around with anything else CAN bus wise related, this is all we needed to do. So we're going to go ahead and reboot the device. So let's come back in here to PuTTY and we're going to do a SUDO space reboot. I'm just going to type sudo reboot and hit enter. Now it's going to go ahead and error out here. It's going to reboot the device and we'll be back in just a second when it's booted up. Actually, it's booting up now. So there we go. Let's jump back over to the camera. It is flipped over, so let me flip that real quick by hitting the button here. Give me just a second. I believe it is the center button that does the flip. Okay, yep, there we go. Center button does flip. It is telling us by default on here that we do have SSH enabled. Let me see if I can get that to focus a little better for you guys. There we go. It is telling us that SSH has got uh, the default password, and that is risky. But we click okay there we go and everything is working it is connected bluetooth is currently on as well so if you had a bluetooth device you wanted to connect to this you'd be able to do that but uh let me just kind of show you here i'll touch everything is working with the touch screen uh we can bring up the ssh or the terminal window there and we can see all that fun stuff but let's go ahead and jump back over to the computer and get started now with getting clipper and clipper screen installed all right guys I said jump back over here. Uh, what we can do is you click up here in the corner on the two little computers under PuTTY and you go to restart session. You don't have to uh, close it and reopen it. Just type pi and whoops. Raspberry is our default password. There we go. We've got that part installed. We can close the instructions or the guide now and we need to go over to Again, I'll have this linked in the description below, but here's the Clipper uh, install and upgrade helper GitHub site. Um, I don't know how to say the gentleman's name, but it's TH33XITUS. But uh, this would be his GitHub, and he has the Clipper install and upgrade helper, or I believe it's Kaiwa, or Kaiwu is how it's, it's said. Uh, but we'll come here. This is where we want to be. And we'll scroll down and he's got a nice little instruction set here on how to install this and this is where we're going to kind of pick up from so if you're ready to install clipper if if the first portion of this got you up and running and that's all you were looking to do great from there you can install all kinds of other fun stuff and do other fun things with it or again like i said we're going to continue on and get clipper installed so let's go back to putty uh, well, actually, first we need to make sure that Git is installed. So we're going to do we're going to copy this portion right here, and we're going to go back to PuTTY. Right click on top of the little green box and hit Enter, and it'll tell us that Git is already the newest version. So Git is already installed on here. We want to make sure we get back into the home directory. <laughs> there we go. So we make sure we're back in the home directory. And then we want to clone this Git uh, repository. Let's come back here, copy that, paste it in, hit enter. Now it's cloning it. And that part's done. And all that's left to do is the dip slash K-I-A-U-H slash K-I-H-U or K-I-A-U-H dot S-S-H. So copy that. Come back in here again. Hit enter. And here is the install helper. The only things we need to do in here, since nothing is installed, is install stuff. And if you notice, number one is install. So we hit number one and hit enter. We want to install Clipper first, so that's number one. Number one and hit enter. 
Uh, in this case, guys, I'm going to install number two, the Python 3. Everything is moving over to Python 3 these days. Everything is pretty solid. Um, understand it does say it is experimental, but uh, I've done this several times without any major issues. So I'm going to pick two and hit enter. And then it is going to tell me how many instances do I want to install. I am only installing one on this because this will be hooked up to a... Um, another printer of mine just one i'm going to use this as a everything all in one for that one printer so again if you know your device can handle more than one instance and you want to install multiple instances this is where you can do that uh, but for me i'm only going to use it on one so we're selecting one and we're going to hit enter now this part takes a little bit of time it goes through and installs some files and runs through some stuff so we'll go ahead and pause here so you guys don't have to wait through all the the fun stuff and as things pop up I'll come back and tell you what to do along the way all right guys at this point it's asking to add the uh, pi to the TTY uh, so we want to go ahead and do that by default you'll notice the Y is capitalized if we press enter that means yes it's going to do it by default otherwise you can always do like I do hit Y and hit enter and now we're done and on to the next part which is installing me uh, Moonraker so that is going to be number two and we hit enter yes we want to uh, or yes it did find it so we do want to install Moonraker and now it's going to go through the process of installing Moonraker this part doesn't take uh, too ridiculously long but again it does take a little bit so I'm gonna let it run and we'll be right back all right guys that part is done and for me I like main sale that's the one that I choose but you do have two different options for web interface uh, that are provided Per the installer, you have Mainsail and Fluid. Whichever one you choose is your preference. If you're not sure, you can install one, try it. If you don't like it, you can go back and uninstall and then install the other and try that. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and install number three here, Mainsail. If you are a fan of Octoprint, they do have a third-party uh, web interface for Octoprint as well. So you can install that if you choose. Uh, just know that uh, the Octoprint one, from my understanding, is it runs a little little heavier, so it's a little more resource hungry. Um, but I do like to stick with main sale, so that is the one that I am going to use. So we'll hit 3 and hit Enter. And now this part here, again, it does take a little bit to go through the process and get it set up and installed. It's not too ridiculously long. Before I get done talking, it may be done itself. And if not, I'll come back again. Any uh, warnings or anything that pop up along the way, too, I will uh, pop up and show you. I'd hate to miss something and have you guys miss a step. So right now I'm going to pause this and we'll be right back as soon as it's done. All right, guys, it does ask if we want to install the recommended macros. I always say yes to this. It doesn't hurt to have the default macros installed. So we hit yes or Y. Let it go ahead and do its thing. It puts the macros in. And before I'm done, it's done. Now, the last thing we want to install again was clipper screen. Because what's the point in having that fancy touch screen if we can't use it, right? So we're going to go ahead and hit 5 and hit enter. This is going to bring us into the part now where it's going to clone the uh, repository for cl uh, Clipper Screen and then run through the install process. This doesn't take too ridiculously long, but it does take a little bit, so we'll let that run, and when it's done, we'll come right back. All right, guys, and now that Clipper Screen is installed, we're back at this, so we're going to hit B for back. We're going to go ahead and notice now all of our files that we installed are installed, so we do have one instance of Clipper installed in Py th or Python 3. We have one instance of Moonraker installed, Mainsail is installed, and Clipper Screen is installed. So since all that stuff we installed is there, we're going to go ahead and hit Q for quit. And we're going to do an SUDO, whoops, SUDO space reboot again. And uh, when we come back, we should be hopefully, fingers crossed, on Clipper Screen. So let's do a reboot. And we're going to jump over to the device so that we can watch it boot up and see what it does. If all goes well, Clipper Screen should be the one that greets us when we come up. Cross our fingers. I do know I have experienced a little issue in the past where Clipper Screen sometimes fails to load. And I do another reboot and Clipper Screen will show up. So we did have another little error there or a little issue where Clipper Screen did not load. So let me roll over here real quick. We're going to hit the little Raspberry shutdown and we're going to tell it to reboot. And let's see if we can 
get this thing to boot properly with clipper screen this time. Like I said, it is a, a little bit of a bug that I have found. I'm not sure what the reasoning for that is, but uh, sometimes it does happen. So let's let it go ahead and reboot here and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, did a quick little reboot. And now, as you can see, we do have Clipper up and installed with me, uh, Clipper screen. And once it comes up and does this thing, it's going to try and connect to a printer, but there isn't one. So there's not much more we can do at this point except for connect it to a printer. But I did want to show you around a little bit here. Um, as you can see, you've got your menu. And when you click on menu, you can go into settings. And in here's where you can set things like your timeout, uh, how it displays time. Uh, but uh, yeah, got a lot of those little goodies in here. If we hit the back button, we can go into system. And this is where it'll tell us what all is installed on here we can do a refresh make sure everything is up to date and then if we needed to we can also do updates from within the clipper screen here so let's jump back over to the camera i'll tell you guys my little goodbye spiel and i'll let you get on with your day hopefully this video did help you out so like I said, guys, I do hope this video did help you out. Uh, the process can be a little intimidating, so hopefully I uh, clipperized it or shortened it up for you, got you to where you needed to be without any uh, crazy overthinking or anything like that. It was a great video, uh, I hope. I hope you guys liked it. If you could, give me likes and comments and all that good stuff. Let me know maybe where I could do better next time. Be greatly appreciated. Again, thank you to Big Tree Tech and BQ for sending out the screen and the CM4. Uh, it's going to go, uh, going to get put to use on a FL Sun that I have. I have an FL Sun uh, Super Racer that I'm going to be clipperizing here in the near future. So uh, maybe we'll do a video on that as well. And you guys can kind of watch this thing in action. So. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out today. I hope you guys found this video useful. And uh, as always, stay out of trouble, stay out of jail, and happy 3D printing. Bye, guys.